Praise the Lord Church. Hope you are doing well by the grace of God. Yes, we will do well by the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's begin to praise and worship him. It's old church choir singing in my heart. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Once you begin to feel it, nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing this song together. Let's join as a church. This revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Let's do it. Come on, put your hands together, church. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. This revival, this revival, and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah. It has to last till the lockdown gets over. Amen. Oh, you can't hear it. But you have to open your ears of your heart so that you can hear it. Gospel song. Once you choose it, you can't lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church. Oh, hallelujah. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Go ahead. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? If not, don't worry. Just ask God to open your heart and open your mind so that we can hear the angels singing praises to God and we can join with them. Don't worry, beloveds. You may feel that you're walking through the valleys, wandering here and there, knowing not what to do. Don't worry. We have the old church choir. Back in the days of heaven, they sang there and they are singing to us. Mm. When the valleys that I wander turn to mountains that I can't climb, you're with me, never leave me. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got a nose. And it's beautiful. I've got an oil overflowing because I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the sweet salvation. There ain't nothing but steal my joy. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat, cause it's all you ever need. Oh, yeah! Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat, cause it's all you ever need. All you ever need. I've got an old church. Choir singing. Can you hear it? I've got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I've got an heart overflowing. I've been restored. Oh, yes, there ain't nothing. Come on, put your hands together. I've got a note. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We miss the church, but we don't miss worshiping you, Lord. I've got my heart. Overflowing cause I've been restored There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy Give God a clap offering church Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah 
Amen. And in the first phrase we sang like Sunday morning. Hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. It's like we were looking only for week long, right? We were very sure that next Sunday we'll be together. But it's been more than one and a half years. We were on and off. Most of the times we are not gathering in the church. So I think we have to change this phrase into Sunday morning. Hallelujah. And it must last all lockdowns long. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yes, we are missing the time we sat together in the church and worship, but we never miss worshiping our Creator, isn't it? Wherever we are, there He is. Amen. So we're going to sing a faith song. I'm going up to the high places and I'm going to tear that devil's kingdom down. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to tear that devil's kingdom down. You don't have to fight it. You have to praise it. Amen. You have to just sing praise to God and the walls of the devil, the walls of the Jericho will automatically fall. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. Going up to the high places. We praise you, Jesus. the high places going up to the high we going up going up to the high place we gonna tear the devil's kingdom down let's go up going up to the high place i'm going up going up to the high let's go place. let's go going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down be strong, we've got to be bold, we've got to watch this, we're going to reclaim everything that devil stole, tell the devil's kingdom down, come on, going up to the high places, going up to the high, I'm going up, The devil's kingdom down. Let's go up, going up. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to the high places. High places to tell us. We've been deceived by the devil too long. What he says is this has been ours all along. Devil's kingdom down. Oh yes, going up to the high places. We going up, going up to the high places. Let's go up, going up to the high places to tell the devil's kingdom down. I'm going up to the high places. Yeah, going up to the high places. To the high places. Down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Are we ready? I know we just sang this song without any warning, right? We are going up. Beloveds, we are going up. We are going into the presence of God. That's the high place. And we will tear from, while praising God, we will tear all the devil's kingdom down. Amen. And this phrase, I hope you, they will display it to you. Definitely we will show this to you. We've been deceived by the devil too long. What he says is his. What the devil says that is his has been ours all along. It's been ours. We didn't know that. Jesus knew it. Jesus knew it. When Jesus was taken to be tempted by the devil, you know, he took Jesus to the highest place and he said, look, every kingdom, everything has been given to me. That's what the devil said. No, 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 no. None of those kingdoms were given to devil. No, everything belonged to God. Hallelujah. But to Jesus, this devil is lying and telling Jesus that everything is given to me. I own everything. If you fall and worship me, I will give everything to you. And Jesus knew that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Do you know that he is a liar? You better believe this, that he is a liar. 
he has been telling you that health is not yours wealth is not yours no you have to suffer all your lives and he says no 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 only the bad people will have all the good things what he said is his has been ours all alone man till now it has been ours and it is it is it did not come free jesus had to pay the price hallelujah on the cross and now we have to celebrate the victory amen so we're going to sing this one one more time and then we're going to believe in god and we're going to say whose report are you going to believe amen i'm going to believe the report of the lord so let's go up get up and tear the devil's kingdom down going up to the high places we're going up i'm going i'm going up Tell the devil's kingdom down. Let's go up. Going up to the oh, we praise you, Jesus. Going up to the high Hallelujah. Going up to the high places to tell the devil's kingdom down. We've been deceived by the devil too long. It's enough. It's enough. What he said. Been ours all along. Come on, come on, let's go. Going up, going up to the high place. I'm going up. Oh, we praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. To tear the devil's kingdom down. We're gonna pull down the altars. We're gonna tear the wall. Up a banner of righteousness and declare that Jesus is Lord of all. Going up to the high, I'm going up and declare that Jesus is King of Kings. Going up to the high places to tell the devil's king down. Come on, church, whose report will you believe? Come on, tell me. Report, will you believe? I'm asking you one more time. Tell me, whose report will you believe? You know what his report says? For his report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. I better believe the report of the Lord. Victory. Tell me, whose report will you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? Tell me, whose report will you believe? For his report says I am sick. His report says I'm redeemed. His report says I'm holy. His report says I'm righteous. Come on, church. I'm going to ask you a question. You can just shout, yeah. Okay. Tell me, tell me. Tell me, are you healed? Go ahead. Are you filled? Are you free? Yes. The victory. Yes. Sing it. Are you healed? Yes. Are you filled? Yes. Are you free by the blood of Christ? Got the victory. Come on, put your hands and tell me whose report will you believe? Believe the report of the I Lord. want to know whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. For his report says I am healed. His report says I am filled. His report says I am free. His report. Can you shout? Can you shout? Tell me, are you healed? Are you free? Yeah! Get the victory! Yeah! Are you-
Are you saved? Are you redeemed? Oh, are you holy? Yes. Are you the righteous one? Yes. Oh, whose report will you believe? I wanna know whose report will you believe? blood amen so we praise him forever and ever and ever amen so don't believe the reports of what the other report says what the medical report says yeah you have to be aware of them but you don't have to believe it completely because overnight in a fraction of second God can do miracles amen last week we saw that we saw that there are lots of things in the Bible. We will meditate on the miracles of Jesus. You know, it is just a fraction of a second, fraction of a second. Amen. Hallelujah. He can do miracles. Now tell me, are you healed? Yeah. And louder. Are you filled? Yes. Did you get the victory? Yes. By the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful week. What a wonderful God we serve. Hallelujah. He does mighty and great things. The Bible says he creates everything with his outstretched arm. So powerful God. You know, the hand of the Lord came upon Samson and he just stood up and he just walked. We serve a powerful God. Yet he's very gentle and soft and he's comforting. That's the song we're going to sing now. Like a mother comforts her child. Gentle, fragile, soft, comforting touch. Yes, we worship Him. Oh yes, like a mom comforts her child. So my Jesus comfort. You will sing that in Hindi. If you know it in Tamil, please go ahead and sing it. Oh. Hallelujah. We sing it. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, open your heart. Open your minds and worship Him. Don't feel shy. Don't feel shy. Just open up and praise Him. Hallelujah. Everything that is within my heart, worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
जैसे माता संभालती है वैसे यीशु संभालेगा जैसे माता संभालती है वैसे यीशु संभालेगा उसने से लगाएगा चिंता सब चिंता सब हटाएगा सिरे से लगाएगा चिंता सब हटाएगा जैसे मां even now as we sing i know that god is walking into you walking into your homes right now oh what a love what a comfort that is filling your hearts with sambalega ha dar ke le jayega never 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 leave you and he will never forsake you you can trust him you can count on him beloved jaise ma sambhalti hai waise yeshu sambhalega jaise ma संभालती है संभालेगा शैल वी ऑल लिफ्ट आर हैंड्स एंड से हाले ब्लसिस होली ने ब्लसिस होली ने ओ वी ब्लस योर मेरे कारण भयलुआ मेरे पाप उठालिया फॉर माय सिंस यू टुक अप द क्रॉस ओ हालेलुया वी थैंक यू जीसस थैंक यू जीसस उठालिया जैसे माता जैसे माँ भी प्रेज यू जी संभालेगा कभी भी ना छोड़ेगा कभी भी जागेगा कभी भी As a mom comforts her child, so my Jesus comforts you right now. As a mom comforts her little child. So my Jesus right now oh we praise you oh, hallelujah go ahead feel free oh hallelujah stretch your hands and feel free praise you Jesus praise you Jesus hallelujah oh hallelujah 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 What 
what a lovely, lovely, lovely Savior. Oh, what a wonderful Father. We bless your name. Oh, we bless your holy name, Jesus. Lord, we know that you're walking towards us with healing in your hands, comfort in your hands. Thank you, Jesus, that you're walking into our homes right now. Thank you for the unexplainable comfort and peace that you're filling our hearts with nothing nothing seems to be okay in our lives Lord wherever we turn looks like it's dead end we are trying to manage somehow and push on with the life's problems at times we fail we say this is it and we just want to give up, Lord. I know there are lots of people watching this where they're at the point, they're at the brim of life where they say, it's enough, Lord. It's enough. I can't manage anymore. I can't stick on with this relationship anymore. I can't find love in this relationship. In my family, I can't feel any good thing. And right now, Jesus is walking into your lives, beloveds. Whatever be the hurt that you caused, whatever is the hurt that somebody else has caused in your heart, and we have Jesus just walking into your lives. Come on, beloveds, put your hands up high. I can feel that Holy Spirit is walking into your homes right where you are I know there are families here they don't want to sit together and worship because of the misunderstandings I know the husband is sitting in another room and wife is sitting in another room trying to find peace somehow and here we have that loving Jesus full of love and compassion for you and your family walking into your homes and if you're that person you can just walk you can just walk and go to the other room where your spouse is that's okay maybe your spouse caused so much of hurt in you that's okay Anyways, the hurt that your spouse has caused you cannot be the hurt that you have caused. That you have hurt Jesus. When Jesus can forgive. And that's what the prayer says. Lord's prayer says, forgive our trespasses as we forgive others. So beloveds, just walk to your spouse. And we have Jesus filling your homes with love and peace and joy oh hallelujah go ahead go ahead don't stop let devil let not the devil stop you from walking to your spouse now beloved i don't know to whom i really don't know holy spirit is speaking to you beloveds go ahead go ahead As we sing Holy Spirit Hallelujah. I know you're binding all the spirits that is causing the problems and confusions in the homes and families that God is the head oh. let there be freedom let there be liberty in the name of Jesus Christ Devil you cannot separate What God has united We praise you Jesus We praise you Lord Let love explode. 
so well, Lord. Let them, let the wall that they've built between themselves be melted in the fire of the Holy Ghost. is giving you new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death we believe in the resurrection and he's coming back again we believe beloved we believe God and Father, God Jesus Christ the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We believe that He died. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And we know that He is going to come back again. And also we believe that this is the spouse that you gave me. And we believe that this is the children that you gave me. And we believe that this is the family that you made me into. And we believe that you will be faithful to us. And we believe that you bind our families with love and grace and joy forever. We believe that you are protecting them from the darts of the enemies. And we believe that you will help us stay strong together with one accord as the family built by you yes Jesus thank you for the hope that you are filling our dear beloveds with be magnified Jesus continue to work in us be glorified we give you all glory and honor and praise that is due unto your name Go ahead, Jesus. Work in our lives. We yield. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is building you back. Amen. Loving greetings to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It was a great time to worship the Lord together, although not in person. We've been making high praises and the Lord was pleased with that. The more higher we lift up his name, the more higher he will lift us up. So continue to give him high praises. Feel the difference of his presence in your life. The title of my today's sermon is Divine Exchange. What did Jesus really do on the cross for you and me? I've shared on this subject several times, but I've been led by the Spirit of the Lord to share the same even today. So I want to share the title called Divine Exchange. Jesus was slain for you and me and by his blood he paid the penalty for our sins and redeemed us on the whole. Hebrews 10 14 says, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Bible says here the sacrifice that Jesus made for us is first of all perfect and then it was permanent. What did really Jesus do for us? We know that his blood was the most holy blood. It was a blameless blood. It was a precious blood. It was very expensive blood. But it was shed for you and me. He paid in full so that we can be redeemed. And that was paid once and for all for eternity. You don't have to bring a sacrifice 
every year just like the people of Israel back in the Old Testament. This was a permanent one. Once and for all, he did perfect everything that is needed for your life. Psalms 138 verse 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. See how prophetic David was. He says, everything that concerns me, my Lord will perfect it. David didn't say, well, my Lord will give me a couple of things. Well, he might answer few of my requests or he will take care of only some affairs of my life or he will handle only the spiritual aspect of my life. He will not care for my physical needs or my health or my financial needs or so on. No, rather he said, everything that concerns me, my Lord will perfect it. And that's what has happened to the New Testament believer. He has perfected everything because he was a perfect sacrifice for every one of us. He has come to give you a perfect life. The fullness of life. The abundant life. So that was paid by his own blood. So his sacrifice was a perfect one, was a permanent one. Hebrews 10, 16 through 18. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds and I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Here again, the Lord reminds us that this was a perfect offering that he made on the cross for every one of us. And it is done once and for all. And there is no longer a requirement of any other offering. It is all inclusive. So it was a perfect one which would perfect your life. It was a permanent one. And number three, it is all inclusive for the whole of humanity. See, he covered every area of your life. Spiritual, physical, financial, material, emotional, whatever arena of your life, whatever you need, it is covered under the blood of Jesus. So the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the perfect one, it's a permanent one, and it covers every affairs of your life. So if somebody comes to you and says, no, well, uh, God doesn't handle physical healing, he hasn't guaranteed that then you got to say, no, the sacrifice that he made for me on my behalf, it covers everything. It is all inclusive for all of humanity. If the sins could be forgiven, then how much more your sickness can be handled by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has greater power beyond your wildest imagination. So don't limit the power of the blood of Jesus rather accept the exchange that happened on the cross. Let's turn our Bible to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 onwards. Isaiah 53 3 onwards. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. 
He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the, sp with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. This is a beautiful passage explaining the ordeal of the Son of God on our behalf. There are several things discussed here about the suffering of our Lord. The sacrifice that he did on our behalf of sacrificing himself. He did several things on your behalf. I want to quickly give you 10 exchanges that happened on the cross. 10 things that Jesus did on your behalf on the cross so that you don't have to suffer anymore in your life. There are lots to discuss. This is not an exhaustive list, but I'm just going to give you 10 points today. The divine exchange on the cross. Number one, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. See, the, we were the transgressors. We sinned against God. And the iniquity that we are supposed to bear. Iniquity means not only your sins and your rebellion against God. But the consequences of it. Every soul that sinned should die. But the penalty that was supposed to come upon our lives. Came upon Jesus. And God smit Jesus Christ. He was stricken. He was smitten. He was afflicted. He was wounded. He was bruised. The chastisement that was supposed to come upon us came upon Jesus so that you don't have to be punished for your sins or your forefathers' sins. You can have true freedom because Jesus has given you his forgiveness. He took your punishment and has forgiven you. So you are a privileged person. You don't have to bear the consequences of your sins anymore. The moment we accept Jesus as our personal savior, and even as a child of God, if you go against his will, if you transgress, the moment you realize you have gone astray, you run back to God, you rush back to God and say, I'm sorry, Lord, please wash me with your blood. The next moment you are forgiven and the penalty is canceled. You don't have to suffer the punishment that is supposed to come upon every sinner. Your sins are forgiven once and for all. And God will never remember your sins. You are free from guilt and condemnation. Number two, Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. See, Jesus could have been taken straight away uh, from praetorium that is the judgment seat to the cross. The other two thieves who were crucified along with Jesus was taken that way. You know that, right? But Jesus was beaten all through the night. He was bruised. His body was torn into pieces. And why did that happen? Everything that Jesus went through. I read a list of things in Isaiah 53, which was a shadow or a, or a prophecy about the Lamb of God. And that was totally fulfilled in Jesus' life. Jesus was beaten, he was stricken, he was bruised, and his body was torn into pieces. Why was that? Because by his wounds, by his stripes, you can be healed. Well, I've come across a couple of videos on YouTube claiming that, you know, Jesus didn't promise any health or healing from sickness. He can handle only spiritual aspects of our life. That's what some people claim. 
especially I came across a guy called Alan Parr. No, his name and mine are same. I'm Alan Onesimus and he's Alan Parr. And he says this passage, Isaiah 53, is referring only to the spiritual aspect of the nation of Israel because he's saying the other passages where the word healing comes, you no, know, heal the nation, you no. Know? In that context, it says about healing them spiritually or forgiving their sins because they went into idol worship. So he's saying this passage also is the same, he says. Therefore, healing referred here is just spiritual aspect, he says. But if you know, that's why I'm saying it takes a simple mind to understand the gospel very plain and clear, but it takes a, a theologian to confuse you. If you read it with a plain mind, you come across two different things here. It talks about spiritual forgiveness or salvation, and then it talks about physical healing. Well, then again, if you want to argue, then go to Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, where Matthew himself quotes this passage in the context of physical healing. And he says, this is the fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah in Jesus' life. I want to read Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word, and healed all who were sick. See, healed all who were sick. It's not referring to spiritual forgiveness. It is referring to physical sickness. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Referring Isaiah 53. So it is very clear, again, First Peter, we can read the same passage being referred by Peter. So this is not some guess and miss work. It is a clear reference quoted from Old Testament in the New Testament, at least two places, referring to physical healing that was earned by the divine, divine exchange, by the sacrifice of the innocent lamb. He was sacrificed on your behalf so that your sickness can be removed once and for all. See, I've shared it several times. The word salvation has multiple things built inside. There are at least five aspects that we are trying to understand, but we don't understand it fully. It is not just spiritual forgiveness alone, spiritual salvation alone. It talks about physical healing and being made whole and being delivered by, from all the attacks of the devil and having a blessed, peaceful life. All put together is one word called sozo or salvation. So when God has saved you, he's an all-inclusive God. That's why I read the other passage earlier which says he has taken care of all the affairs of your life, not just your spiritual aspect alone. And again, Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3 says that he has forgiven all your iniquities and has healed all your diseases. So he is referring to physical healing in Isaiah 53, not just spiritual healing alone. So if people try to confuse you, you got to be clear minded. You got to have this revelation in your heart that he not only forgave you, but also healed you of all your sickness and disease. He paid for that. Well, I'll come to the point why it is not happening automatically to us. Everything is not going to happen automatically. There are several aspects of salvation which we have not enjoyed. We hardly taste a portion of it. But if you wake up and know the truth, the truth shall set you free and you will enjoy the fullness of it. He has come to give life and life more abundantly. If you want to enjoy a part of it, well, go ahead and enjoy only a part of it. But I'm not going to be limiting God, but I'm, I want to enjoy the fullness of it because he has promised fullness. So let's enjoy the fullness of his blessing. So he has carried away all your wounds and sickness and he has promised healing. 
That is the second exchange that happened on the cross for us. Number three, Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might become righteous with his righteousness. So he became sin. He who knew no sin became sin. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin, that is Father God, made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. All your sins are not only forgiven and cancelled, but you've been made righteous. So from being in a negative status, God didn't just bring you to a neutral stand and left you there. But he exalted you so higher that you are made righteous. You have right standing with Father God. You are an eligible candidate to enjoy all the blessings of God. And that is the standard that you have in Christ Jesus because of the exchange that happened on the cross. Jesus was sinless. Even the judges who were judging him that day, including Herod and Pilate, they said, we don't find any fault with him. The high priest couldn't. They were trying to find some uh, lame excuses to crucify him. They said uh, he claimed to demolish this temple and within three days he will build it. No, our forefathers took several years to build it. It was a lame excuse. We all know that. But besides that, nobody could find fault with him. Jesus was a faultless person, a holy person. Right from his birth until his death and resurrection, he was spotless and holy. He was sinless and so is he even now. But on the cross, Father had to abandon him because all of humanity's sin was brought upon him. He was the scapegoat on our behalf who carried away all the consequences of our sins. And therefore, he who knew no sin was made sin by Father God. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, Bible says. It pleased Father God to bruise his own son so that we can enjoy the privileges of of being his son, father's son. So he who knew no sin was made sin so that you can become his righteousness, so that you can claim the blessings of a righteous person. Number four, Jesus died our death that we might share his life. Hebrews 2 9 says, But we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. There is a theory called soon theory. They claim that Jesus fainted because of exhaustion and people thought that uh, you know, he had died but they say that in fact he didn't die. He had fainted and they buried him and the third day, with fresh air, he came out, they said. So that is not the reality because we know that the soldier standing at the foot of Jesus' cross, he took a spear and pierced it through his side. And John records that water and blood came. That was, he punctured the lungs and the heart. Water and blood, last drop of blood came out of his heart. Nobody can survive a punctured lung and a heart. Jesus died. Jesus tasted death because no, we know that the, the penalty of sin is death. Ezekiel 18.4 says, the soul who sins shall die. We were supposed to die. But Jesus died on our behalf so that we don't have to die, so that we can share his life, the abundant life, a healthy life, uh, an influential life, 
a wisdom filled life a life of victory a life of health and vigor and vitality you can influence this world you can be a ruler over this planet if you know that jesus died on your behalf so you can lead a healthy long life on this earth number 5 jesus became poor with our poverty that we might become rich with his riches second corinthians 8:9 says for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich jesus became poor the owner of all the galaxies who humbled himself to become a human being now again in that he limited himself and became poor he gave up everything although he had everything and he humbled himself to the death on the cross and he was in poverty in a sense he was not born poor but he humbled himself and he gave up everything that belonged to him there was no belonging that he had we know that he was you know humiliated he was stricken and stripped of all his clothes there was nothing left on him he was stripped of everything by his poverty you might become rich god wants you to be rich remember that see god wants you to have wealth but he doesn't want the wealth to have you that's where we confuse things there should be a right balance that every child of god should have always god first in our life seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness then all these things shall follow you goodness and mercy shall follow you all through your days if you follow christ so bible doesn't say if you follow christ you will become poor you will become empty handed you have to suffer no that's not the reality the reality is he became poor so that by his poverty you can become rich god wants you to be rich god wants you to be wealthy god wants you to be influential but he doesn't want the wealth to influence you you should be the master of money you should be the master of everything that is on this planet you are supposed to rule over it so have the right balance jesus became poor so that you can be rich number 6 jesus bore our shame that we might share his glory we know that he was smitten stricken and then humiliated in public he was spat upon and then he was stripped as i mentioned earlier he was humiliated he was made naked he was so much humiliated that people jeered at him they said you know you who claim to build this temple within 3 days why can't you save yourself you who claim to save others why can't you save yourself it was a humiliation and then another guy came and said if you are the son of god come down from this cross one guy came and blindfolded jesus and slapped him and then he said now prophesy who slapped you now they humiliated him in different aspects he was put to shame he was humiliated he was dishonored he lost his glory although he is the god of glory he is the master of glory all glory and honor belongs to him but yet he was put to shame on our behalf so that we can share with his glory we can be honored we can be exalted and we can be considered in god's sight god who saw us wallowing in our sin 
did not despise us. He came down to our level. He lifted us up from our mighty clay and lifted us up and made us sit with him in the heavenly places before he could sit us there. He washed us with, our, with his own blood, made us holy and made us glorious. Now we share his glory. We have glory and honor. So he was made little lower than the angels, although he was the boss of all angels. He lowered himself than the angels so that we can become greater than the angels, so that we can become equal with God, so that we can dictate angels. So he took away our shame and shared his glory with us. He has lifted us up and has made us sit with him in the heavenly places far above all principalities and power. Number seven, Jesus endured rejection that we might be accepted by Father. Ephesians 1, 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Jesus was rejected on our behalf. Remember he was crying on the cross. He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken. Father had to turn away his face because all the sins of humanity came upon him. Father cannot see sin. So he had to abandon his own son. He was forsaken. He was rejected by Father. So that we can be accepted in the beloved. Because he was rejected, we were accepted by God. Now we have this privilege of walking into his presence with all boldness because we've been accepted by Father. He was disinherited so that he can receive his inheritance. See, he, he was disinherited. I don't know this guy. That's what Father ha would have said. Because he's full of sin now. I cannot accept him into my presence. And through that work of redemption, there were several sons born into the kingdom. Now we are being accepted by Father because of Jesus' rejection. So Jesus endured rejection that we might be accepted by Father. Number eight, Jesus became cursed that we might receive a blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, having become a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive a promise of the Spirit through faith. All through human history, there were different methods of uh, penalizing people. They could have stoned him to death, they could have beheaded him. They could have thrown him to lions and other wild animals. But Jesus had to particularly wait in human history till the Romans came out with this system of crucifying people, which is the maximum humiliating, maximum painful ordeal. That, that would give maximum pain to people. That is the maximum punishment that humanity could come out with. And Jesus waited for that thing to happen. And he came in that right time so that he can be hung on a tree. So that he can be crucified, nailed on the tree. So that his blood would flow for every one of us as a remission, as a payment for our sins. So that he can die with maximum humiliation and carry all of our curses. So that we don't have to be under any curse. We can be curse free all through our lives. In the Old Testament people say that curse can come to three or four generations. But in the New Testament Jesus had cancelled all the curses. So with this clarity you've got to claim your blessings. Just because he has cancelled all the curse on the cross for us. It doesn't automatically happen in your life. Because 
there's a violator who always violates the laws of God. It's a devil who will try to trick you and get influence in your life. He will try to invade into your life because of your ignorance. You got to wake up and say no because he had, he had become a curse on the cross for me. I'm curse free now. I'm set free from every curse of the devil. No curse can come upon my life. I resist it in Jesus name. You got to claim this. You are curse free in Jesus name by the exchange offer that was done on the cross by Jesus Christ. Number 9, Jesus became a servant so that you can become his son, father's son. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and 5. And when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth a son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons this passage of isaiah 53 is titled as the suffering servant referring to jesus now all the sufferings that he went through he went through like a servant he was serving humanity although he is the owner and the creator of humanity he humbled himself to become a servant for you remember on the night he was betrayed just before sharing the communion meal with his disciples he he removed all his outer garments and he clothed himself with a small towel and he took another towel and and a bowl of water and he started to wash the feet of his disciples and wipe it with a towel why did he do that to to remind them that he is the suffering servant that was prophesied by Isaiah i did not come to be served i came to serve to serve humanity what a humbleness he displayed in his li- life when he lived on this planet he became a servant he did everything that is required for you so that you can become father's son now we are adopted or given a rebirth into the kingdom of god as sons of god now we can boldly say to father here i am your son your daughter and whenever you say father in heaven he says yes my son my daughter how are you what can i do for you how can you have this privilege it is because jesus took our servitude he became a servant so that we can become sons of father god we are sons and daughters keep that in mind number 10 jesus went to hell so that you can live in heaven forever remember he died and he was buried physically here but his spirit and soul went into hell there were several reference of it Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 for as Jonah was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of the great fish so will the son of man be 3 days and 3 nights in the heart of the earth acts chapter 2 verse 27 and 31 for you will not leave my soul in hades nor will you allow your holy one to see corruption he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hades nor did his flesh see corruption so jesus went to hades or hell on our behalf we were condemned to hell because of our disobedience the inherited nature from adam and as well as our own disobediences we were supposed to go to hell which is called as the second death in the scriptures first death is our spiritual death the disconnection between us and father the second death is our physical death and then the third death in the bible context it says as the second death the second death is being sent to hell and jesus was sent to hell on our behalf there he even preached to the souls in bondage and many were set free even that day and on the third day he rose again from being dead and by rising up again by his resurrection 
everything was brought into perfect completion that's why the sacrifice is called as the perfect sacrifice lacking no good thing nobody can say no maybe jesus forgot to do this little part there's a limitation here or there are some glitches here or some you know, when they do programming in the it field they say this one line of programming has some error or some glitch has happened there there is no glitch there is no error message you don't have to reprogram anything because jesus has work is the perfect work the sacrifice of the lamb of god was the perfect one once and for all for all of humanity covering all arenas of their life taking care of everything romans 6:23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord so because of jesus going to hell you have eternal life you can live in heaven forever what a great privilege we have in christ jesus so quickly uh, reiterating all the 10 points the exchange that jesus did on the cross for you and me number 1 jesus was punished that we might be forgiven number 2 jesus was wounded so that we can be healed number 3 jesus was made sin so that we can become righteous number 4 jesus died our death so that we can share his blessed long life on this earth number 5 jesus became poor so that by his poverty we can become rich number 6 jesus bore our shame that we might share his glory number 7 jesus endured rejection that we might be accepted by father number 8 jesus became cursed so that we can receive a blessing so that we can be blessed number 9 jesus became a servant so that we can become sons of father number 10 jesus went to hell so that we can live in heaven forever may the lord help you to realize and enjoy all these benefits that he made as an exchange on the cross for you and me well go ahead and make this exchange accept this wonderful offer and enjoy the full offer of the cross which was made exclusively for you paid in full paid once and for all which is a perfect payment made by the blood of Jesus enjoy the abundant life let's close our eyes and pray father thank you for helping us to remind ourselves of the great exchange that happened on the cross that you did so many things for us lord eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor it has dawned in any human brains what you have kept in store for us lord so much in store for us just because we said yes to you lord what a great privilege we have help your people to understand the fullness of life that you have come to give and let them enjoy that abundant life lord a blessed peaceful joyful happy life on this planet and then eternal life with you lord let them enjoy let them share this with their neighbors and friends and let them be a right representative of your kingdom let their handy works be blessed let their hearts desires be granted in jesus name we pray amen may the love of father god grace of our savior jesus christ and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with every one of us forever and ever amen amen god bless you thank you